Good morning. My name is John Reed. Today is April 17th, 2015. I'm here on location at the Vanda Child's High School. We're here to speak to the high school students and hopefully to motivate them, to inspire them, and to encourage them. Um, in 2008, this school was shut down due to extreme violence. And they decided to break the school up in, to six different schools within one school. So we're here today um, with a number of presenters. Policemen, EMS workers, parole officers, and a variety of other different occupations of specialties. And each presenter is going to talk to you about their career choice, how and what made them make the career choice. And um, just give them different options of what's out there from a white collar to a blue collar job. My job is to inspire them and to tell my story and talk about my checkered past, but I have to weave that around my career choice, which is to be a motivational speaker and entrepreneur. So we're going to talk about my old career in the criminal underworld. Um, we're going to talk about my new career, and we're going to talk about the choices that led to both careers and the, and the benefits of both. So, uh, I'm a little nervous. This is my first time in a high school since the 80s. I'm not going to say the year because then you know my age. But I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to going into three different classrooms this morning. Um, or talking to three different segments. Um, maybe the classes are coming to us and we stay in the same room. In the same room. But nevertheless, I'm looking forward to it. I'm happy to be here to serve and to walk in my purpose and I just to uplift those. And to be a voice for the youth and for troubled adults and to construct a pathway of healing day by day for redemption and for change. So, thanks for listening. Um, enjoy the presentation. So, we're going to try that one more time. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. I know it's Friday, but it's not Monday. So we shouldn't have Saturdays, so we should have them. All right? What we're going to do first, I would like to just get a little familiar with you guys um, by first asking you where you're from. You don't have to tell me your name. That's up to you. I just want to know where you're from. Anybody from the local area around right there? Why show your hands? Okay. Does anybody know where 241st Street is? Right Plains Road? Anybody know where the valley is? Anybody know what the valley is? Anybody know what the valley is? Everybody know the co-op is? Clark City? Anybody here from Clark City? No? Anybody here from Valley? Anybody here from Gun Hill? East Chester? You tell me where you're from. <laughs> tell me where you're from. But this is my hood. This is where I'm from. I mean, I currently live in Rockland County, but I'm a native resident of this area. From Co-op, 41st, the whole Northeast Bronx is where I'm from. How about you? Where you from? Hmm? Bronx boy? Okay. Good morning. Where you from? Carpenter. Okay, how about you? Bronx boy. So y'all three know where Nick's Pizza is at, right? Y'all know about Nick's Pizza? Okay. You should. He's laughing. She knows. How about you? Co op? What section? Section 2? We call that the Deuce Crew. That's what we used to call it back in the day. Section 2. How about you, young lady? Okay. You? 235th. Okay. That's the one East 230th. I mean, when that whole area over the gas station broke down, remember that, huh? You probably built a little bit of that. Okay. How about you? Baytown. That's like right on the cusp of co op and Valley, right? There's some interesting stories about that area, huh? Last stop on the fire train? Yeah. yeah. Second to last. Second to last. Because it's going to die. Yeah. Die. How about you? Cypress. Cypress. Okay. Well, next to Cypress. So you're looking further out, huh? Down the sixth line, right? Gotcha. How about you? Burke Avenue. Burke Avenue. I just live on Burke. Over there, that's close to where uh, Allison is, right there, right? Good. So, 
I don't see no arm from your hood. I'm originally from Section 5, Prophecy. Um, I'm 45 years old. And as your teacher already expressed, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a motivational speaker. But the truth is, that's really like a cover for my real title, because my real title is I'm really a teacher at heart. I'm just not under the parameters of the Department of Education, and I get to move around a little bit, and I don't have the summers off. <laughs> I have to work seven days a week, all right? All year long. Um, and what I do, pretty much, is I crisscross this country and I talk to youth at risk and I talk to troubled adults. I have a question for you. What do you think youth at risk or at risk youth, what does that mean to you? What's that term at risk youth mean? Anybody? It's not a text. There's no right or wrong answer. I just want to see what you think. Youth not being able to pursue what they want to live. They want life. Okay, I'll take that. Nothing? Young lady? Oh, like, I don't know. Like, people are risk for um, dropping out of school, going to jail. Dropping out of school and what? Going to jail. Going to jail. Interesting. You taking shots at me? No, no. It's okay. It's all right. How about you? You have your hand up. Adolescents on the wrong path. Speak up. Adolescents on the wrong path. Adolescents on the wrong path. Very intelligent group. Anybody want to add anything to that? So you all know pretty much, right? At this you. You know what you see when you walk out of the school or after school. You know what you see on your way to school in the morning. You know what you see in your neighborhood, correct? We have positive role models and we have some role models that are not so positive, correct? And we have youth who are exposed to a variety of choices, but they make the wrong choice. Okay, so what did you say? Uh, youth at risk, I yeah, sorry. Um, youth not being able to pursue what they want. Right? Not being able to pursue what they want. Why? Because they make the wrong. Huh? Because they make the wrong choice. So pretty much, you can grow up in a household with three or four siblings, exposed to the same stuff, and if one of you make the wrong choice, that person can wind up not graduating from high school and ending up in jail, where well, the other siblings may not. So it's not environment, it's your choice. Now you have choices today, this is why we're here for Career Day, correct? We're here to share with you what we do for a living, how we make this career choice, so that you may ultimately come up with some decision and decide what you want to do with the rest of your life. So this is a very exciting time for you. What grade is this? I know this is high school, but what particular grade is this? 12. 12. So you guys. Okay. Oh, it's all grades. It's mixed. Okay. Interesting. And I understand that this school was shut down in 2008 due to violence, extreme violence, and then switched into a six different schools. Correct? And this is the school for writing and communication arts with all different ages, actually. So that's a non traditional approach, circular classroom. Um, but you're in this room, in this school, because there were issues. And these kind of issues is what I want to talk about, because this is what I do for a living. All right? We have men and women of all ages, young and old, who make poor choices. We're not bad people. We just make some bad decisions. And those decisions can cost us years of our life. All right? I haven't been in a high school since I was probably 17 years old. And I didn't like school. How many of you like school? Be honest, you're going to get in trouble. Do you adopt <laughs> One person raised their hand, two people. And that's okay. That's okay. If you would ask most adults, how many of you like your job, you'll see how many hands go up. We're not going to ask the teachers that. <laughs> but I'm going to say this the teacher is a very, very special person because the teachers are what shapes the minds of the future leaders. And as old as you get, you will always remember every last one of the teachers. They don't pay teachers enough, I believe, like they, like they should. Athletes and entertainers can get millions of dollars. But a teacher, come on in, bro. But a teacher who shapes the mind of future leaders. You may be our next president. You may be the person who comes up with the cure to cancer. You may be 
someone who invents something that affects the whole world in a positive sense. You never know who you're talking to. You never know who you're sitting next to. So it's important for a teacher to come to work every day with purpose, right? Not just punching the clock, not just doing something to make money, not to be money motivated, but purpose motivated. And I'm using teachers as an example because in my heart, that's what I am. I just have to use the guise of the motivation to speak and the mentor to actually teach. But all teachers cannot motivate. All teachers cannot mentor. And that's what we want to talk about that a little bit later. And the need for it. All right? Um, but being a teacher is a very valuable, um, sacred responsibility. And like I said, you will always remember every last one of your teachers. You remember your first grade teacher? Second grade teacher? No? <laughs> is that by choice? Or is, is, that is that convenient memory? Convenient at least you call it? How many remember their third grade teacher? Anybody? Fourth, fifth, sixth? You get the point. They have left you with some kind of impression. They have stamped something on your brain forever. And they kind of, they kind of live forever if they can do that. Awesome job. So, my job today is to kind of just share with you a few things and hopefully you can make a choice out of the vast ocean of choices for a job. And it won't be just to make money. It will hopefully be to provide a service that affects humanity. Who wants to do a work or job that they really don't like doing? Nobody, right? So you have to find out what you're good at. You have to figure it out. So, real quick, um, I want to thank you for inviting me, for being here. I want to congratulate you guys because being in high school is a good step. It's a, it's, it's a very difficult place. It's, it's, a, it's a fun place. It can be. It can be a very painful place. Growing up, coming on from adolescent to adult can be a very painful place. And you ask any adult, they'll, they'll tell you, yeah, we have, some, we have some memories of high school and junior high school that we really don't want to remember. Some of you are experiencing that now. Some of you are anxious to get out of here. Some of you are kind of afraid of what's next. Am I, am I speaking pretty much the truth? Something. Huh? How you doing, brother? Where you from? White Plains. White Plains, where are you? 233rd. 233rd. I used to live on 230th in White Plains. 7 Eleven East 230. Nice to be my love. I'm not li living in Rockham County. And I'm here to talk to y'all. So, what I'm going to need from you is whatever's going on with you, you hear me? Just let it go, man. Throw it out. The window's open. Imagine yourself boiling it up and throw it out the window. Because we need you to participate. We need your participation. This is like a team. Alright? Because what we want to do is go from one level to the next. And it all starts with making the choice. Alright? So, um, we talked about at-risk youth, troubled adults. Now let's talk about war. Anybody know what bioterrorism is? Biological terrorism? Chemical warfare? You raise your hand up? No. Talk to me. What is it? It's when you use like chemicals and other like kind of weapons mm -hmm. to like hurt people. To hurt people. So we, we, we hear about that and we see it on the news, bioterrorism, chemical warfare, right? But did you ever stop to think that bioterrorism and chemical warfare exists in your own neighborhood? How so? Chemical warfare. We have plenty of terrorists in the community who are indulging in the occupation being a discredit of pharmaceutical distribution. We call it selling drugs, right? Right? Chemical warfare. Right? We have communicable diseases that are killing our people, right? Biological warfare. I'm just flipping the language just to enhance your perspective of the reality of what's out there and what can actually stop you from graduating from high school and or finding a good career and or shifting you the other direction when you don't graduate high school and wind up where, young lady? Oh, yeah. In prison. Okay. 
So we have all these issues going on in the community. We have all these issues going on right here at school. We have issues going on at home and some issues we don't talk about. And if we don't find someone to talk about these issues, it can lead to us making a poor decision. So that's where people like me come in. We come into an environment, whether it's a school setting, right? Because we have, we have some schools where the youth are killing each other. We got the bloody pit thing going on. We got the co-op and valley thing going on. We got uptown versus downtown going on. We got girls pulling boots on each other, slicing each other's faces. You don't want that for yourself or for your children. So it has to stop. It has to stop somewhere. And you need people who can come in and talk the language, understand you, and not look down on you, not misunderstand you, but understand you because we come from the same place you come from. All right? Know you, they know the older people in your family, your, your relatives, who pretty much did the same thing you did, came to the same place, schools and after school programs you attended. So we're really no different. We're just sort of older than each other. That's all. You and me, I with you, but the, just, the, the years are different. Is that right? And you can't tell us that you know, we're old. We, we still feel pretty young. But we were where you are. So here's the thing. Anybody here can cook? You like to cook? Okay, that might be your career choice. We're gonna make pancakes. Can you make pancakes? What do you need to make pancakes? Okay, what else? What else? So can you, if I put the directions down on the card, can you follow them and, and produce some pancakes for everybody in this room? Right? You can provide a service by feeding everybody in this room by following instructions if I give them to you. Okay, good. Anybody that like to travel? You? Okay. Do you know how to get to Washington, D.C. from here? Right now. So if I give you a map, right? Clear directions on how to get there. Could you do it? And the money, and then whatever you need, you can do it. All right, so if you can produce the pancakes and you can get us where we need to go, then we have half the battle won. We're talking about instructions and directions. That's what we're talking about, right? Now, if you don't follow the directions or the instructions, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? We're not going to be eating no pancakes and we all going to be looking at you real strange in this room, right? <laughs> Correct? And if you can't follow the directions to keep where you need to go, what's going to happen? It's going to be what? Lost. Describe a lost adult. Could be one that didn't graduate from high school and is in prison. Could it be? My point is, it's important that we follow the instructions and directions from the people in our lives that are here to guide us. We all need mentors. All of us. We all need that. We all need somebody that can get up in our face and tell us no when we want to hear yes. Or the opposite. That can motivate us. Counseling is good, but coaching is something altogether different. There's a world out there that's telling us that we can't, right? But a mentor tells you that you can and gives you the motivation, the energy, the inspiration that you need. That's what I do for a living. Pretty much. I travel. Um, I have a team of people who I work with who are commission based and they actually call places, they do research, they contact people and they actually present what I have to offer and pretty much make the deal, and it's almost like being an entertainer, but we're not here to entertain. We're here to inform and to enlighten. And um, the wonderful thing about that is you get to see people grow, you get to see people make better decisions, you get, you get to help people, and for me, it's like I have, this is my second career choice. I had a career before this one. Anybody know who that was? How many people read this? You read it? Somebody read the last paragraph for me. You don't have to read the whole thing. Just read the last paragraph.
Hold on, we got live, huh? Anybody? I'll be fine. You don't have to be shy. It says, after serving 17 years in prison, John is determined to make a difference in his life as well as the lives of others. He believes that he has been blessed to have lived two lives in one lifetime and has dedicated his new life to constructing a pathway and healing of healing and redemption. So, let's go back 20 something years ago. I was that guy on the corner selling drugs. I was that guy who was pretty much lighting up the neighborhood and it wasn't the 4th of July, if you understand the metaphor. I was that guy who was going back and forth between neighborhoods having territorial beef that some still last I hear today between these areas that we all talk about. Boston Seacore against Co-op. Co-op against the Valley. Valley against Edenwall. This kind of stuff still goes on, doesn't it? Yeah, you know it does. Of course it does. But it doesn't have to. It needs to stop. I served 17 years in prison for being violent um, and for making poor choices. And while I was away, I went to school um, I took advantage of therapeutic classes, I took advantage of mentorship, I allowed my family to love me, and I learned to love myself. And I learned to transcend all of the environmental distractions that I used as an excuse that ended me up in prison. But my brother who grew up in the same neighborhood, he didn't go to prison, he's never been arrested. So it had nothing to do with the environment, it was my choices, the things I decided to partake in, in the environment. And see, what man in the back? What's your name? Craig. Huh? Craig? Craig? I didn't hear you. Craig? Craig? I was like you, Greg. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to be here, man. I wasn't feeling this at all. Important is, but if you don't want to be here, where do you want to be? That's what you need to figure out. Because as you get older and older and older, the choices get narrower and narrower. See? If, it was up, if it's up to you, where would you be right now? Keep one hundred. where would you be? Anywhere? Do you have a career choice? No? That's okay too. You guys don't have time. But you gotta start thinking about something. Um, how much time do I have? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Real quick, competition. We want to talk about that. We're taught to be competitive, especially boys, men, young men, playing basketball, football. Females are also competitive. They're competing in various things. But unhealthy competition can get us into serious trouble. Try not to focus on being better than each other in things that really don't matter. Who cares who has the, the fly sneakers? Who cares who who has the latest clothes and trendy fads and the latest phone? What's important for y'all, as my young brothers and sisters, compete in school. Keep that competition right here in the classroom. Who gets the best grades? Who can go to a better school? Right? That's what you should be competing at. That's healthier for you. You got time to, to, to do all that other stuff. Um, and goals. Goals, goals, goals. The same goals that you have as, as you compete in school, eventually you'll be the same way when you choose your occupation, when you choose your career. You're going to have um, career goals, and some of them may be money, but it also may be to provide a service. You may want to help somebody. You may want to, it may be something that you have, a gift that you have, or an interest that you have that can actually be something that you can do for the rest of your life. Try to find out what that is. And even if it's even if it's something like if you don't like working with people, you may want to drive a limousine. You may want to do something where you don't work with anybody. But going to prison and dying in the streets should not be your career choice. And I say career choice because I participated in criminality for a long time. Ain't you know where it got me? A retirement plan in a state penitentiary. I had a panoramic view of New York City from Rikers Island. 24-hour security, 24-hour fitness program, free medical, free dental, 
and a, and a, and a roommate for the whole 17 years. Would you like that to be your, your, your retirement plan? No, right? Not at all. So we have to make some changes. You know, hey, Greg, um, you ever see yourself dressed like this? Can you do this? Can you do this? How would you feel dressed like this? How would you feel walking into a room with brothers your age that go through the same things you go through every day and talking to them? Just talking to them. Could you do that? Of course you could. See that? Everybody has something they can do. Now, I'm not promoting that you can get in trouble, sell drugs, have a criminal lifestyle, go to prison, and it's okay because you can come home and be a motivational speaker like John B. No, that's not the word. That is not, that is not what we're saying. All I'm saying is take the negativity and turn it into something positive. You don't have to do anything negative. You already have negative circumstances around you. Flip those into a positive. Flip. And when you do, you'll be able to exhibit professionalism, right, and success. And I'm going to show you, because we have a whole lot of this going on in the hood, right? We have a lot of different choices. Everybody know this guy in the hood, right? Y'all know, know, know this dude? Y'all know this dude, right? Let me add, maybe this might not be your flavor, but we'll add, we'll add this to it. Y'all know this dude, right? Y'all know him? What's that in your ear, man? Right there in your ear. I ain't tell you I was a magician, right? Bang! What's that? See that? Y'all know this guy, right? Got the nice jewels on, got the hat on, right? I'm not gonna side. I'm not, I'm not gonna put my pants down, but y'all know what I'm talking about. This is okay. If this is what you want to do, this is okay. But there has to come a time when you come out of this uniform and you come this way. You're a professional. You're about business. Nothing personal. You have to live a life for yourself. And what you see in the world is not it. So, before the end of the session, students, please remember to complete surveys and then before proceeding to the next session. Thank you. That's one thing I remember. I couldn't talk to any announcements in school. But, um, this was my first class today. I kind of just winged it. Um, but I hope that I said something that inspired the young brothers and sisters. Um, just expose yourself. Expose yourself to different things. Talk to people. And, and get with your teachers and your elders. We're not your enemies. We're here and we're, we're hard on you because we've been where you are and we want the best for you. So we're not your enemy. We're, we're really here. There are adults that have some sense. <laughs> That, that make sound decisions and have your best interests at heart. And um, stick with the winners, with the people who are successful, and never, and, and never, never, never doubt yourself. You can do anything you want to do, anything. Just put your mind to it. You have the power to make a decision and be whatever you want to be. And criminality, incarceration, none of that has to be an option for you. It doesn't. The mere fact that you guys are in school, you're, you're, you're on your way. Because statistically, this school right now produces 60% graduates at the end of the year. And it's been that way for the last couple of years. Is that correct? That means that in September, out of everybody that was supposed to graduate, only 60% did. What happened to the other 40%? And then what happened to them? That's a good question. You don't have to be one of those. You're not going to be one of those. You guys are going to be winners, but it all is based on choice. On choice. One simple choice can make or destroy your life. So I hope that you guys get the most out of career day. There's a variety of different presenters. Hello. There's a variety of different presenters. Interestingly, you'll see some of this. One is a policeman, one is a, a, a parole officer, who I happen to know. Okay? I'm like, I know you. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm from here. I said, and then we figured out that he's a parole officer. And I'm no longer on parole. I'm a law abiding citizen, taxpaying citizen, who is working feverishly in the community to help 
young brothers and sisters, and also chocolate dogs. And if you want to know my definition of a chocolate dog, I was just discussing it with somebody. It's, a, it's an adult. A chocolate dog is the activist youth that made the wrong decision. Pretty <laughs> much. That doesn't have to be true. That doesn't. So, I think I'm out of time. If anybody has any questions. We have about five minutes left. Do you have any questions for Mr. Reed? Don't ask me about how to get that chain from me. I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> no, I'm messing with you. Come on, I know you got something still when I see it. I see it in you. I see it. No? Anybody? So I'm going to ask you a question. Um, who knows? Exactly what they want to do with the rest of their life. Anybody? Anybody in here knows what they want to do? What do you want to do? Okay. But you're not, you're not going to make a career out of going to college. Like right? you're not going to be a professional student for the rest of your life, right? So you really don't know what career choice you want. A what? Air transit control. Okay. That you plan on going to the service and you just want to go to a commercial airline? Huh? You haven't decided yet, but that's what you want to do. Okay. That's vision. And that's what you need. You have to have vision. Picture yourself, visualize it. Matter of fact, real quick, I have an exercise. Everybody take a car. Take a look at this car. Pass it around. One, I want you to write your career choice on that car. Even if it's nothing right now. Or whatever it is, just write it down, keep it. I don't want it, that's for you. Keep that. We're going to call that your vision card. Alright? A vision card. And what you can do is turn that vision card into a vision board. Something like this. And you put your ideas on paper. See, we got Greg, he's participating. We got him, that's good. That's good. That's a good thing. We made a connection. And that's really all we came to do. I want you to write it on there, and as often as you can, you write down what you want to do. And you speak it into the universe, you put it out there, and you visualize it, and wake up every morning and tell yourself, I'm the best at whatever I do, I can accomplish whatever I want, I'm lovable, I'm capable, and nobody can stop me. Don't worry about the kids that snap with you or somebody that says something negative. Feed your own mentality and your esteem, and know that you are a winner. All right? If you can make it to work, excuse me, if you can make it to school, I think I'm talking to a dozen times, see? I'm, I don't know, I'm all over the place sometimes, forget who I'm talking to. Um, everything you did to get to school this morning and to get home this afternoon is just what life is like. If you can navigate and make the right choices to get around this and that, to get to school successfully and safely, that is exactly what your journey is going to be like in life. Decision making. Following direction. Following instructions and letting the people that are a little bit more experienced than you and older than you to guide you. So, with that, I'm done. I thank you for blessing me with the opportunity and the privilege to speak to you. This room right now are future leaders. It's your choice what kind of leader you want to be. You want to be the leader of 219 Street or you want to be a leader in a positive way in your community? You want to run the drug ring? On 219, or you want to be, you know, the EMS worker, or the policeman, or the cable man, or the teacher, or whatever. I made a career choice when I was in high school. I chose to sell drugs. Right here in New Orleans, Manhattan, Jersey, DC. I chose violence as a way of expressing myself. I chose spray paint as a way of expressing myself as an artist. I chose all the wrong things and that career choice got me a retirement package. And you know what my retirement package was? A panoramic view of New York City from Rackers Island. Free dental, free medical, 24-hour security, fitness rooms, <laughs> and all of the roommates that you could possibly desire. And I'm being, I, I'm being a little sarcastic, but the truth is, if you make the wrong choice, um, 
that could possibly be your career. Every time. Your will and your decision making power, you can be whoever you want to be and do whatever you want to do. So right now, on your, we call your vision card, what it is that you want to do as a career option. And that's your card. And then what, what I'm going to inspire you to do is take the card home, open it you, and create, get a, get a big sheet of paper like this and create what we call a vision board. And everything that you want for yourself of positive, put it on that board. You put it there, and you look at it, and you talk to yourself every day. And, and whatever negative talk that comes from people in the neighborhood, from your family, from your peers, from your friends, and laugh and say you can't do that, dismiss it and do self-talk, self-actualization, right? You tell yourself, now I'm the best at whatever I do, and no, nothing can stop me, nobody can stop me, none of these environmental circumstances of the hood, nothing. I will accomplish my goal and be exactly who I want to be. And we ain't talking about being in prison. So, Anybody have your card? Anybody want to share what's on their card? We won't laugh at you. We're just, just interested to know. Just one person. Doesn't have to be everybody. Because we already know you're not. You're not. Come on. As a career choice, I'd like to become an entrepreneur and fashion designer. Entrepreneur, fashion designer. Excellent. Anybody with an entrepreneur? Is? I left it off the board purposely, not because I couldn't spell it either. Are you your own business? Huh? Are you your own business? Running your own business? Good. Yes. You ready to talk now? Oh, that's my son. What? Running your own business. And what does it take to run your own business? Knowing. Huh? Dedication. Dedication. So, can you, for those that were late, is punctuality part of running your own business? Being on time? Yeah. Don't be quiet now. <laughs> it is, right? Okay, let's flip it. Suppose you were going to do something negative, right? Criminal, right? I'm not, I'm not promoting that, right? And you and you, the 293 crew, if y'all had to go do something and your man showed up late, how would you feel about that? You feel some kind of way, right? Why you showed up late? Man, we gonna get this money. And dude, that's how you feel, right? It's the same way your boss is gonna feel. It's the same way your partner's gonna feel. It's the same way your employees are gonna feel if you're coming in late and they gotta be there early. So this discipline involved in running your own business. As a motivational speaker, I pretty much work for myself. But my job is to get other people to work for me that can find me gigs in places where I can go and speak and motivate people. I'm not money motivated, I'm centered in helping people. And sometimes there's money attached to the service and sometimes it's not. Like this morning, I'm not here getting paid for this. This is volunteer work because I care. Because I sat in these rooms and I made the wrong choices and wound up in prison for 17 years. So you may say, well, how are you getting here on career day? The teachers let you in? Did my parents, did my parents consent to you coming in here knowing you did 17 years? But I'm not a criminal anymore. I did my time, I came home, and I found out what works for me. So I no longer have to hurt people. I no longer have to sell drugs and use it as an excuse. I no longer have to be involved in fights and gun battles between the Valley and Clark City, which was going on in the 80s, and it's still going on right now. And if you really want to know, that's why I'm here. Because I participated in something that is perpetuating, it's still going. It's still going, man. And it has to stop. And some people, they don't care. It's still going. Somebody had their hand up over here. You got your hand up? Oh, yeah. Look at that person. You really want to know? Everybody want to know? Because yeah. it doesn't say that on this paper. Is it okay to say that? I was arrested and convicted for manslaughter in the first degree. Anybody know what that is? Yeah. That means that's when you kill somebody accidentally, but you intend to hurt them, but the result is death. So, if you don't like him because he don't have the same stigmas that you have, right? Or her weed is a little different from hers, and y'all get into a fight, and you just want to punch the person, which is bad enough, and the person falls on the floor, or hits their head on his chair, and dies, did you mean to kill him? But your choice to swing at him 
is what causes death, correct? So manslaughter is when you intend to hurt somebody, but the result is death. It's like if you're driving and you're intoxicated, and you kill somebody and wake up in the hospital, hand goes to the bed and don't remember what happened. Did you intentionally kill the person? But it didn't happen. Based on what? Poor choices. So my life is dedicated to healing and to redemption and helping people who made poor choices make better choices. Um, and it can happen to anybody. So why did they allow me to come in, you know, into Evander High School? Career there. Because I had a career in criminality, right, that I chose, and the result was prison. That doesn't have to be for me. I came home, again, after doing 17 years in 2010, and I've been home now five years. I have my own business, and I speak to young brothers and young sisters in the community, in school, in community centers, in the hood. I talk to the Bloods, the Crips. I talk to adults. I go into the prison system. I go to homeless shelters. I do it all. Because there's brothers and sisters just like you and like me out there who need somebody to come and talk to them. And there's a lot of stuff that you experience in your neighborhoods that you have to deal with, that you see, that you may not necessarily talk about, but they're there. And it's up to you to walk around them, to navigate around, and not get caught up in it. And as I said earlier, I'll say again, everything you did to get to school this morning and that you'll do to get home today is what you have to do to get through life. Right? Make the right choice, go the right direction, avoid this, and get where you need to go. Because I'm going to be honest with you, man. It's in high school, we know we think we're cool. It's about having popularity and girlfriends and how well we're dressed. None of that means nothing when you get to an adult level. None of that means nothing. Matter of fact, when you become an adult, and I'm sure you'll testify, and I'm sure you will too, the ones that were not cool when we were in school, those are the ones that got the best jobs, right? The ones that were the square, that were sitting up front all corny, you know what I mean? Those are the ones that are doing their thing right now. And, 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 and the ones that were playing games in school, that's either in jail or working two or three jobs and struggling. Got three or four baby mamas, home huh, laying up with five or six kids. Yeah. And you know what they're saying? They're not happy. They wish that they could go back to high school, to junior high school, and do it again. How many people you know like that? Too many. How many people you know like that? Too many. Uh, yeah. So, back to the directions and the, and the instructions. If you can take directions and instructions from somebody to get somewhere or to make something, then you can do the same thing with the adults in your life that are here to help you, man. To help you get from point A to point B. It's just that simple. So whatever you want to do, you just have to decide on it and make it happen. If criminality is not going to be your career choice, then you need to decide that to death. And whatever it is, make it happen and don't let nobody stop you. Because if I can do 17 and come home and make a life for myself, pay my taxes, no longer commit crime, and, and develop enough respect and trust to come into the educational system, which is one of the most difficult systems to penetrate, correct? Then you can do the same thing, but you don't have to go the way out. You don't. So, anybody have any questions? Sure. How is it you know that you were in prison for 17 years and get up and said you wanted to make like a future for yourself? Don't it was challenging? Absolutely. Very challenging. It was extremely challenging because when you choose criminality as a career path, right, you might not make it back. That's number one. Number two, your whole thinking has to change. You can no longer think the same way as a, as a criminal, as a responsible person. You can't. And, and back to the whole young swag and being cool and all of that, that has a place. But if you really want to be successful and do something meaningful in life, then you have to share some of that behavior. It's okay to have leisure time on your day off and, you know, and, and, and matter of fact, I'm some props with me. It's, it's okay on your day off 
to land, to land. Y'all know this guy in the hood, right, that does this? It's okay. That's okay. Maybe this might not be your style. You might, you might rock the fitted, right? Some of your young ones, right? That's, y'all know this language, right? That's y'all know. And, and you, I did this earlier, it didn't work this time. I did the magic earlier. I had my chain, but I pulled it out of the brother's ear who was sitting there. And y'all put the bling on and, and all that. This has a place. But then it's gonna come a time where you're gonna have to shed all that and just and get professional, get you a business card, right? And, and and grow up and mature and provide a service not just to your neighbor but to humanity. You don't know what I mean. There's so much knowledge and and, and potential in this room. You may be the person who develops the cure for cancer. You may be our next president. You may be our next editor. You may be the one who takes us to Mars. Who knows? And that's the value of that lady sitting there, this lady here, and people like me who are older. We're not here to just babysit you. We're here to shape you like clay and make you into the future leaders, which is an awesome and sacred responsibility. You'll always remember her. You'll remember your first lady teacher, your second, third, fourth. You'll remember them all. They'll live forever. And that's how great it is to be a teacher. Unfortunately, the country we live in thinks that entertainment, entertainers and sports figures should be the ones that get the millions. But what about the ones that shape the minds of our future leaders? Something to think about. So if you're money motivated, <laughs> certain occupations may not be for you. But if you really want to make a difference or there's some kind of skill that you have to offer, that's where you want to look. You want to go to school and figure out what's best for you. Who else has a career choice in there already? Talk to me. Me? Talk to me. I want to be a nurse or I'll go with uh, I want to be a nurse or I'll go with like, if you don't work in the cell, I don't just want to call it. I think A nurse or what? What do they call those people that work in the cell? A worker? Oh, correct. Yeah, there's this one here. I said, there's a parole officer here, there's a, I think there's a corrupt officer here, and a policeman. And you want to know what's funny? I know one of them. <laughs> I know one of them. I walked in, I'm like, dude, you familiar? He's a parole officer. I know him because I was on parole. And he was happy to see that I'm here doing this. Because if I was the same person I used to be, I wouldn't be permitted in here. No, they wouldn't want me so hurt, y'all. Are you kidding me? But the point is, it's a just it's a challenge. And yes, that's a, 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 a worthy goal to achieve for, but what else? Anybody else? Come on, I see you, don't be shy, it's okay. It's your dream, it's on your car. Remember, this is your, don't look at it. This is your vision car. And you envision what you want and make it a reality. What? Private investigator? Interesting. What makes you choose that? Um, I don't know. I just did some hard work with the police. I don't know. I just want to do it. Okay. Can I ask you a personal question? Uh -huh. Personal question? Uh -huh. No disrespect to the Are you like a nosy? You have like a nosy personality? Uh -huh. you like a, no? No, that's okay. If you're a detail, if you're a person who likes details, uh -huh. right? I'm just using a different language. I'm saying nosy, right? But politically correct will say a person who's detail oriented. If you're detail oriented, you'd be an excellent private investigator. Because you look for the fine details and stuff that other people overlook. Right? If you don't like working with people, you want to work by yourself, you may want to consider a career option that affords you that driving a truck, doing something which doesn't require you to participate with a lot of people. Let me in on the truck. What's so funny, man? He thinks it's funny if all things are in a class and he never sits in. He's in my class, this is the second time I've seen him all year long. Well, man, I'm going to tell you right now. Not what? Not cool. Not cool. And I'm, I'm telling you this as an older brother. So I want to keep it on hand with you. Not cool. Not cool at all. And I'm not putting you on blast. I'm saying this because I sincerely care. And I've been there. I was that dude in school. You know, I was a fly dude in school. I was a dude with the girls. I ain't pay attention to school. I could do the work, but it was boring to me, right? I feel you on that. It was boring to me. I didn't see myself in it, right? I didn't understand why I 
Prince of Columbus discovered the country that we was a whole bunch of Indians. And a lot of stuff didn't make sense to me. So I get it. But I also understand that there's things you have to do in order to get to where you want to go in life. So you got to play the game. And if you're smart enough to do the work, do it. And get up out of here. Because you may have to do it again. And, 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 and don't, we get left back too. Right? What happens with us is we make the wrong choices. Again, back to the word choice. It might be the wrong relationship choice. And here we are, repeating the class again. What does that mean? When we find somebody else just as dumb as the person we were just with. Right? Or we make a poor career choice. Right? Or we do something wrong on a job. Right? And we wind up back in the same situation. That's like getting left back, man. It's the same thing. Everybody else is moving on. And we left back. Because we want to be different rather than go with the flow of things. We want to go against the grain. You want to know what those who go against the grain of life, where they wind up? Huh? They call it being anti-social. They call it a counterculture. Call it prison. They call it prison. When you find somebody tougher than you in there, that might even dig your trap. And we'll see if you'll be laughing at it. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, we want to keep it appropriate. But I'm, here, I'm being real with you. I'm being real. Does anybody in here have a, um, a career choice already? Okay. Meaning what we want to be? Like, what we yeah. I want to see what you want to be when you grow up. Right? You're a teenager. I'm not going to ask you when you grow up. Right? I'm still growing up. We all are. Well, all of us don't realize it. So you got to talk to a teenager in a special kind of way. Because y'all are in a special kind of part of life right now. And you know, you know, adults, I'm gonna be honest with you, adults who view you as teenagers, you're like aliens. You're like the strangest people on the planet because nobody really gets you because you're growing and your ideas are constantly changing. And I'm not saying that to put you down. I understand. I understand the challenges that come with being a teenager. Some are scared and, and, and don't know like how to even approach life. Some of you are anxious to get to come out of high school and get on with you. You're tired of rules, you're tired of homework. I understand. But with all that frustration and anxiety, we need to make the right choices. Because you're talking to a, a, a brother from your hood who made some poor choices when I was in high school. On my card, which you're welcome to, my business card, it says we are not uh, we are not bad people, we just made some bad decisions. Can, any, can you, anybody here think of a bad decision that they made? <laughs> Didn't turn out too good? And don't say going to school. Anybody? Come on. I wasn't going to pass. Okay. Back then in Jamaica. I'm from Jamaica. Okay. Going to pass. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Come on. Lying to, Lying to your mom. Okay. Anybody else? Huh? Applying to the school. Applying to the school. Okay, we got to see it. That's okay. I know you was a comedian from outside. But that's alright. It's okay. That might be your career choice. Who knows? Make people laugh. I'm a computer Your computer engineer? Excellent. Okay, so here it is. Um, when I was in high school, I opted to sell drugs. I didn't call it drugs, I called it pharmaceutical distribution. That's what I wanted to be. Right? And uh -huh. A what? Sound professional. Sound professional. But I wasn't. See? I was lying like she was just talking about. I was lying to myself and I was running around killing my people. I'm gonna say it again, I was killing my people. Every time you put drugs in somebody else's hand, you're killing them. You're now in your choice. There's other ways to get money. Anybody. That's not the way. And, and, and the thing about that is not only are you a victimizer to other people, you become a victimizer to yourself. Because eventually, they have a retirement package for you. And um, I found that out when I was sitting on Rikers Island enjoying a pan panoramic view of New York City. Right? Free medical plan. I had 24-hour security. I had a, 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 a fitness program that was free. I had um, free food, right, and a whole bunch of roommates <laughs> that I really didn't try. I'm being comical about it, 
But that was my career choice. I was really young. And it cost me 17 years of my life. So, most people who choose a career, they engage in that career for 20 years and they retire, right? I engaged in mine and retired and sitting in prison. Now, of course, you don't want that for yourself, and we don't want that for you. So, we want to make career day a little interesting and, and, and mix it up a little bit. So, am I saying that it's okay to commit crimes, sell drugs, and be violent? Because you can go away to prison and come home and be a motivational speaker? No. That's not the message we're conveying. The message that I want to convey to you is that it's important that as young future leaders, Young brothers and sisters, y'all have to make the right decisions. If you don't make the right decision, it may cost you years of your life or your life itself. It's that serious. There are circumstances around you in your hood that may not be all that favorable, but if you have the opportunity to come to school, get through school, then you can, there's nothing that you can't do. There's nothing. And you don't have to take the path that I did to get it right, you can get it right right now. You just have to figure out where you fit in society, find your niche, find your purpose, become one with it, and do your job. But you don't want to do a job that makes you feel like you're still in school. And I don't mean that in the sense where you're learning. I mean that, oh, I got to go to school, get there, that. You don't want that as a career choice. You don't want to say, oh, I'm I'm working some dead-end job that doesn't make, give me any kind of fulfillment, doesn't make me happy. I just feel like a slave. Do you know a lot of adults that feel that way? Yes. You do. See? Now you may say, oh, sure. how did she say that? She's a teacher. Let me tell you something about being a teacher. That's not taught to you. Being a teacher is one of the greatest, greatest roles you can assume. Because you have the opportunity to shape the beautiful minds of young people. That's a gift. That's a sacred and awesome responsibility. And as I said to the class before you, in fact, I'm really not a motivational speaker. I'm just a teacher who knows how to motivate. I'm a teacher who knows how to mentor and move people and connect with them because of my experience. But every teacher doesn't have that experience, but they have the sincerity. And that's what makes them great. And all and you remember, the older you get, you will remember every last one of your teachers. From first grade all the way to high school. If you think back now, you remember that. That's the that is how important of a role they play in your life. And to me, that's that's phenomenal. I don't have to, you know, dribble the ball or, or, or box somebody to get millions of dollars. There's other ways to do that. There's other ways to be famous. There's other ways to do things that actually serve people and give you a sense of fulfillment. Because McDonald's, Burger King, Target, Starbucks, these are not career choices for you. And don't let anybody minimize your choice. Like, no, you should be a carpenter. If you want to be a doctor, then that's what you be. If you want to be an astronaut, that's what you be. If you want to be an actor, Whatever you want to be, just don't be a criminal going to jail. Don't do that. Don't do that. You don't have to go to that. It took me damn near 40 years to figure out what I want to do with my life. 40 years. And life is real short. You have the opportunity to choose right now. So this competitive nature of being a young person, right? Being a teenager, we like to compete. We like to compete. Anybody here in the sports? Yeah. Anybody any good? You good? Real good? Real good? <laughs> okay. What do you what do you play? So, uh the right wing on the main key. I um I like Huh? What sports? Yeah. Soccer? Soccer? <laughs> okay. Now, we laugh, but that's a very interesting sport, right? It involves a lot of stamina, strength, endurance, speed, decision making, right? And if you're not in shape and you don't know what you're doing, you'll never learn how to control that ball, right? You can you do the chips on your knee, you know? You can do all that in the head, you know? Okay, but that takes practice, that takes time, right? And that's with anything that you do, right? So, what is the goal in soccer? Or in other countries, they call it football. 
right? What's the goal? The goal is to get that ball into what? The score. All right. That, my friends, is the goal in life. You want to score, right? But that competitive spirit that you have on the soccer field, on the basketball field, on the football field, you need to bring that into real live life. Up close to person. You have to be a player on the field, right? You have to be a teammate on the field, right? And the goal is to get the goal, right? Get the touchdown, get the home run, hit the, hit the ball, right? But you have to be on the field to play the game. So if you're not in school, if you're not in high school, if you're not in college, if you're not doing what you have to do, you're not going to win the game. You're going to be on the sideline watching other people play. And what that means is that when everybody else is graduating, you'll be somewhere else hearing about graduation. All right? When everybody's off to college, you'll be walking the streets of New York City while everybody else is off to college, meeting new people, having new friends and new experiences. Right? All you have to do is make the right choice. Just make, make the right choice. And that's how powerful you are as you, animals can't do it, insects can't do it, you have the power and the potential to decide right now who you want to be. And, that, and, I, and I'm not talking about the motivational speaker who did 17 years in prison and now is coming home and is, and is doing the right thing and found a niche for himself. You don't have to go that now. So how do we accomplish that? Right? I gave you a car. Did I have a car? No, I didn't. Ooh, my bad. Moving too fast. This I'm like my third time doing this, so I'm kind of I'm kind of mixed up a little bit. Can you take a car and pass that? Pass me down. Let's call this a vision car. All right. And if you can get yourself a piece of paper like this and put it up in your room, we'll call this a vision board. Everything that you want to do, write it down and speak. It. Write it down and visualize it. I want you to picture it in your mind. I want you to dream about it. I want you to taste it. I want you to feel it. I want you to hear it. I want you to smell it. And you keep at it. Keep at it. Keep concentrating on it until you see it materialize in front of your face. Now you've done this with smaller things, right? You want something to pair sneakers. You walk by the store every day. You look at them. You convince your mom, your father, whoever. Somehow you figure out a way to get them sneakers, right? The same thing we want to do with our career choice. They want to write. Yes, write it down, whatever it is. You don't have to show it to me. You don't have to show it to anybody. This is for you and you alone. Because you have to have a conversation with yourself. I'm not going to be the one who gets arrested. I'm not going to prison. I'm going to finish school. I'm going to be a good, productive member of society. I'm going to accomplish my goals. Thank you. But this is about you. You're the most important person in this classroom. We're just here to serve you. And as adults, whose purpose is to serve, it, and, and it's not money motivated, because anybody, can I say this? Anybody who works honestly in board education for a nonprofit organization, or is in, into any form of service-oriented work, they're not money motivated because that's not where the money's at. <laughs> that's yeah. not where the money's at. Now you guys always ask me for a quarter. I really never have a quarter. <laughs> right? And then, and then being that you guys are the future leaders, right? See, this, this is where it gets deep. Being that you are the future leaders, right? You may have the power in the future to decide that the salaries for teachers should change. It shouldn't be the athletes and the entertainers who get the millions. Why not those who, who shake the minds of future leaders? Mm -hmm. I mean, why can't they be treated a little better? Because when you value or you compare the value of what they offer society, you know, it's a shame. All we have to do is make somebody smile, laugh, and drip with wall, and we can <laughs> and we can, but then we really think about that. And then think about what you want for yourself, right? 
will your career even be an option four or five years from now? Right? Is it, is it, is it you know, will you have a, mark, a marketable skill? What does it take to get that? I mean, there's so many different dynamics, and this is why we have to finish school. We advise you to go to colleges where you get new experiences, expose yourself to different things, and kind of figure this out. Is there anybody in this class who has no idea absolutely what they want to do? And it's okay because I was like that too. But it's not okay to be like that and not talk about it. That's where people come in to help. Anybody know what a mentor is? Yes. What's a mentor? A mentor is somebody that helps other people to Okay. Well, there's no such thing as a wrong answer in my class. Somebody that guides you. Huh? Somebody that guides you. Somebody that guides you. Okay. Come on. It's just somebody that helps enhance your skills. Enhance your skills. Anybody else? Pretty much. Everybody needs one of them. Even adults. We need, don't we need mentors? I'm a mentor. But don't you? Yeah. Well, we need them too, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I had a mentor growing up in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Profound credentials that you can have. Sincerity and experience. I'm not knocking education. It's okay to have a bachelor's degree. It's great to have a master's degree. And even <laughs> great to have a PhD, right? On a professor level. She probably not a work by the discipline, but experience and sincerity will get you further than all of that. Because if you can make somebody feel what you're saying, if you can connect with somebody, then you can move them a lot further than a person who cannot. And all it takes sometimes really is to just listen. You know what I mean? You guys are human beings. And you're going through a real human experience. But what you don't know as teenagers is that the way the world <laughs> interacts with you and, and views you because you're growing into your own, teenagers are considered the weirdest people on the planet, right? And this is from an adult level, to, from parents, I'm not going to say teachers because we're in school, <laughs> but what it is, what not, it's not that you're weird, it's that you're in a place where you're coming from adolescence and you're in between adolescence and adulthood. And, and, and hormonally you're changing, you're growing, your mind, oh, like you may want to do this today and this tomorrow. It's just, because you're, you're growing. And growth is painful. So you might seem a little weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like when you're on your way to school in the morning, right? You're on your way to school, you haven't gotten in yet, right? So when something is in transition, it can be in a, a dangerous state because it's moving. You haven't gotten there yet. So of course we're not going to fully understand you, right? You may not even fully understand yourself. And that's okay. But that's what environments like this, I don't mean just school, but I mean environments like this one right now, that you can actually feel, that's where you need to be. That's where you need to connect yourself with. And everybody has it. Whether it's somebody in your family, somebody in your neighborhood, not the negative role model, right? Because we all get attracted to what I see coming out your ear, what's the fancy? I, I, I did it the first time, the second time, the third time. I did this magic trick earlier where I went to the guy and pulled my chain out of his ear, right? But I got caught. You seen it when I did it earlier. It was a lot smoother, but this time I messed it up. So I need to work on my, my, my magician skills, right? <laughs> but, but that's okay. See, I might need a mentor to help me with that. But we all know, we all know the bling, right? We know the bling. We know the guy in the corner walking around like this, right? We, we know that, right? Right? Just one of these on every corner, right? That you can leave school right now and go talk to y'all laughing. Right? Huh? The bum brothers from the up the block, over there, the patty spot, right? Smoking all day, you know, I mean, no disrespect, but we all have them. What about the brothers and sisters like this? You think you can learn from them? Of course you can. They may have used to walk, they used to walk around like this, and they may walk around like this and they get off. But they know how to square up. And get a uniform. Come on, ladies. So, okay. As somebody that didn't want to be here, but that's okay. Because you're here. You're here. And all I can really 
said to you, young brothers and sisters, is again, you know, it, it, it really is up to you what you want to do. You can do anything you want. This should not color, race, gender, lifestyle, none of that shit should stop you from doing what you want to do. Anybody have any questions? Anything. Don't be shy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was talking about the people having an experience, and actually, like, when it changes, what? Like, how well, do things how really change that much? Yeah. Yes. It's not. It's not to me. Personally, my parents grew up in a different country. Okay. And I'm growing up here, so they use their experience from that country to try to compare it to this one, which Good is like, point. which is just it, like it bothered me because I'm just sitting there like this place is I have to conform. Like I don't have to conform, but I have to just I can't do what you did. Like, I'm not in the setting that you was in when you was growing up. So right. I would just do, do what I have, like, use what I have in the stuff. Because I, I use the internet a lot, so he complains stuff about when I was young. We didn't have that. I come mm -hmm. from the farm, and we go to work, and this. And I'm like, there's no farm. There's, like, <laughs> that's all I have. That's, the computer is, like, a modern-day thing, and that's what I use. So okay. You know, no, that's, that's okay. So now, here's the thing. And this is going to be something that all of you will experience. There's going to come a time in your life where the child becomes the parent. Now this is, this is, I got to be real careful with what I'm saying. I don't want you going home, you know, telling <laughs> the mom to call you dad. I know, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> all right? <laughs> she says she's going to get, you really lost your mind up in that school. We have to help our parents understand our generation, right? We have to help them understand our living reality, our human experience, what school is like in 2015, what the streets are like, what education, whatever, what life is like. They may want to have worked in the farm, so you get creative. You can translate it the language of the internet is like the new wild, wild west, right? It's like the new West. It's an open field that people are exploring and just coming up with stuff, correct? There's your farm. There's it. And just translate the language over. Help them. But well, do you really understand what they've been through? Like, yeah, have they made it? Like, so I if you get it. I don't really know what they've been through, but I just can't. They want me to have this experience for some reason, but I can't. I don't want to, actually. I understand. I don't know. want to, but that, their experience is going to shape them, help them shape you. You know what I mean? Like they went through something that they were like, we don't want you to go through this. Or maybe right. you should. And come when you graduate this year from this high yeah. school, mm -hmm. you should send you back to the farm so you know exactly what they went through. That's not gonna help me at this point. It's too, I feel like it's kind of too late to try to give me that experience because I'm already too, like, yeah, I'm already too, like, into society and what's modern. If you come back in the farm, I'm just gonna, I'm literally gonna start cursing and not do anything. and. Like, it's gonna be crazy if you don't so, Well, she died in 2013. You said you might start cursing and not doing anything. Don't you feel there were times that when Gar that was working at the farm that like, he would start cursing mm. and not doing anything? Well, he made it seem like he was like really into it. I mean, he's talking about it. Like, yeah, I came home from school, we walked a mile. I'm like, what? <laughs> well, you know, listen, okay. Before we run out of time, I want you to try to find some value in your parents' experience. Not just, you know, the life they provided for you, but there's good value in hard work. Hard work, honest work for honest pay. That's the concept, right? Discipline, right? Punctuality, right? There's a lot of different things we can see in that. We might be caught up in Farmer Jones with the, you know, uniform on and all that, being in the hot sun. No, but just hard work. And I'll give you an example of, let's see, we have guests. Yes, the conventional crowd versus the digital club, right? When I was going to school, we had to sit and, and fill out on a piece of paper that would be like 20 of them, blank. And they would give us a time, and we would have to figure it out and draw in the line. There's some um, students who can't do that. Because they, they rely on the digital. So you see, there's an advancement with technology, but there's also a dummy down effect because it removes the thought process. So, there's value in the old, right? And there's value in the new. Your job, as the youth, our future leader, is the bridge the gap.
honestly speaking, that's my job. That's what I have to kind of bridge the gap. But that's also your job. Because you have to make your world understandable to those who are here to help you. We can only help you if you, let, if you tell us what you need. That's our job as teachers, as adults, as mentors, to, to put you on our shoulder and get you higher than us. But there has to be a mutual respect. You have to respect what was before, just like rap, just like hip hop. So I can say I don't like some of these new cats, right? Right? Because I'm original from, from, from back in the days, right? Right here in Bronx, we brought the Nonium and all that, we did performances, this stuff now. Anybody can make a record, but I still have to respect it because both are connected. One led to the other. So there's value in your parents' experience, you just have to find it. And you'll find all you get. You'll start paying attention and you'll find value in some things that you kind of missed, but you'll get it. Anybody have any questions? Did anybody fill out their card? Yes. Again, you don't have to show me, it's up to you. It's that's for you to visualize and concentrate on. Let me give the young lady who came in. Alex, you have a question? Yes. That's your vision card. Put whatever you make sure you have for yourself. Um, you can write it on there and concentrate on it and make it real. The change the change, but start by writing stuff down. Come on. Are you, are you like proud of the choices you made in life? Am I proud of the choices I made in life? That's an interesting question because I made some good choices and I made some bad choices. I'm proud of the good choices that I made. Um, the bad choices that I made, I realized doesn't make me a bad person, but poor choices led me to go to prison. I'm not proud of that, no. What I am proud of is, is taking full advantage of all the opportunities that I had to better myself and come home and do something with it. So you, do you think that you would not go to jail if you were still on I'm sorry? Like, if you would not go to jail, do you still think that you would be like... The way I am right now? I believe I would be, but that's the path that I took. Um, and it just took me a little longer to get this. I went, I went the long way around the block rather than just going through. <laughs> Straight through the, it just took me a little longer. I didn't have to do that. I really didn't. Huh? Yeah, it was like a No, it was more than 17 years? How old are you? 17. Yeah. That's more than a wake up call. It's, it's, it's a reality check. It's a reality check. And um, part of me, I'm, I'm grateful for the experience because it shaped me to be the person that I am today. And now I can come home and get back. And I can inspire and encourage. Um, and I can be a little example. There's a lot of adults who did time in prison who once they come home, they just can't find their way. So that's another part of my purpose. I show people that, you know, I've been home since 2010 and you, would not, you wouldn't even know that I was away. Some people you can tell. Um, but it's exciting for me to be, and I've been in the high school since 1987. Yeah, I am with you. So it is, it can happen for anybody, but it doesn't have to be too long. And so here we are outside of Evander High School, right here in the back. We just came from career day and spoke to three classes. We had three segments of career day and I spoke to the youth. And from my assessment, I can see clearly that our youth need mentors. They need adults who have had similar experiences to them to come either into the schools or develop some kind of program outside of the school we can actually talk to our youth and address some of the issues that our youth are experiencing daily, but they're not talking about it. I just met with three young brothers and they're telling me that Co-op City and Gun Hill are at war with each other now. The Valley and Co-op, of course, as always, are at war with each other. And we need to step in. It's beyond just Co-op in the Valley and Co-op in Gun Hill. It's beyond the Bloods and the Crips. Now it's neighborhood gangs against neighborhood gangs. We need to do something about this. And if there's anybody out there who's willing to help, to be involved, I need your help. Come with me, let's work together. Let's do this work. Let's get these youth off these streets and stop them from killing each other. We have to make a difference. Holla at your boy, Jay Reed. Some of y'all know me as Justice. Jay, John Reed, 
doing what I do, walking in my purpose, trying to save some lives and talking to the youth. Stay tuned. We got Truman High School coming up next, probably in a couple weeks. Holla at your boy.